welcome dear students in today's class on analog and digital communication subject so today we are going to discuss our next modulation technique in digital modulation that is phase shift keying and we will specifically talk about binary phase shift keying that is bpsk in today's class so let us first have a quick recap of what we discussed in the previous class related to concept of uh, digital modulation so we discussed that digital modulation is concerned with the transmission of digital data your data is in digital form whereas your carrier will be in analog form only okay so it is also a continuous wave modulation scheme once it is launched in the into the channel otherwise the transmitting data is in the form of discrete messages or bit stream so our data to be transmitted or message to be transmitted in digital communication system it is discrete in both time and amplitude so since we need to convert our original information signal which is analog in nature to digital so we need analog to digital conversion and digital to analog conversion this was the block diagram of digital communication that we had discussed in detail in the previous class so here you can see that the information source is followed by a to d converter okay and then we had source encoder and channel encoder i explained these blocks in detail in the previous class and in the receiver side we have reverse of all these blocks in the transmitter side that is we have channel decoder source decoder and d to a converter then we had talked about in detail about the advantages of digital communication we all know that digital modulation techniques are highly noise immune regeneration is possible for long distance transmission we can simultaneously transmit different nature data by multiplexing them once it is converted to digital data we can increase the security by using encryption technique and uh, we can use additional processing and the circuitry is relatively inexpensive in your digital modulation techniques the main disadvantage of digital communication system or digital modulation technique is we need larger bandwidth as compared to analog communication system and we also require adc dac and obviously because of digital nature we introduce a quantization error into our system so these were the three types of digital modulation techniques that i had introduced you to in the previous class that is ask fsk and psk that is amplitude shift keying where amplitude is varied in frequency shift keying your frequency is varied in accordance with your digital data and in phase shift keying which is the topic of today's class the phase angle of the carrier okay so we change the phase angle of the carrier in accordance with our digital information signal and today we will see in detail that how do we actually change the phase angle so these were brief overview of the uh, wave forms of various digital modulation techniques i told you that ask is also known as on off keying so this is nothing but the wave form of ask where during one carrier is present during zero your carrier is absent that is on off on off similarly in fsk wave form during one we have one frequency f1 present during two zero we have another frequency present and i told you we have two types of fsk discontinuous phase fsk and continuous phase fsk so you can see here that there is no discontinuity as we move from one to zero or zero to one so uh, it is the waveform of continuous phase fsk which can be generated by transmitting your fm signal through uh, sorry uh, by transmitting digital data through frequency modulated uh, modulating or modulator fine then in today's class we are going to talk about your bpsk modulated signal so here you can see that your amplitude of the carrier is constant your frequency is constant 
there is some change visible here whenever there is change from 0 to 1 or 1 to 0 and uh, this is nothing but the phase change introduced so we will talk about when we talk about psk in the next slide so let us start with the concept of phase shift key as i told you this is a digital modulation technique so our data will be in the form of ones and zeros and our carrier is a sinusoidal analog signal okay so in PSK, the phase of the analog carrier wave is varied in accordance with the digital data. So whenever there will be transition from one to zero or from zero to one, there should be a phase change in the analog carrier wave. And we all know what is the meaning of phase. If I draw a sinusoidal signal with two different phase, then uh, phase basically tells us the point at which my waveform is starting so you can see here that this sinusoidal wave is starting from point zero and uh, uh, the amplitude corresponding to this zero is also zero so your starting point is coinciding that's why our phase angle is zero if i start my uh, sinusoidal wave like this okay and if i show you the portion which has not been covered here means this particular portion. So it means I'm starting my sine wave at a delayed time. Okay, so it means now the phase is not zero. Had it started at this point as in above, phase would have been zero. But now the second wave is starting at this instance. Okay, it means it has a phase of 90 degree. Okay. Similarly, if your sine wave start at this instance, when your reference point is zero, it means half of the wave has already passed. Okay, assume that we are looking from this point onwards. So here the phase of my sine wave is 180 degree. Okay, so in a way your phase angle is related with the delay in the starting of the waveform. Fine. So I hope you are able to understand the concept of uh, phase. So in case of PSK, what happens when my data bit is one, then my transmitter outputs the carrier with some fixed phase. I haven't told you what will be the value of that fixed phase when one is transmitted. And when zero is transmitted, then whatever fixed phase we have taken in that phase, there will be difference of 180 degree. Okay, what does it mean? That the phase value that we use, say that phase value is 5, 1. If we take the phase value as 0, when 1 is transmitted, then phase value, when 1 is transmitted, it will be 180 degree phase difference. That is, it will be 180 degree. Okay, had my phase 1 value been, say, 45 degree, when one is transmitted in that case my phi 2 it will be 225 degree okay the main thing is that the two phase values that we are transmitting corresponding to 1 and 0 then there must be a difference of 180 degree between the two phases that is the concept of your uh, phase shift keying and since we are considering one bit at a time here so we can say that we are considering binary phase shift keying okay now the most simple example or most simple way to understand bpsk is considering zero uh, phase angle uh, for when one is transmitted and uh, 180 degree phase angle when zero is transmitted so we will take this uh, method to represent our different phase signal okay so uh, when we uh, consider this then we get such kind of waveform it means that you see the phase will be changed whenever there will be transition from one to zero or from zero to one okay so my sine wave has started at phase zero fine it is continuing okay and uh, as soon as we come across the transition in the bit, okay, like at this instance, if we come across transition here, then 
there will be 180 degree phase change and 180 degree means phase reversal okay so it turned around back okay what i want to say that my waveform was continuing like this had it continued it would have appeared like this but phase has changed by an amount 180 degree okay it means this 180 degree portion has been skipped and this portion has come here okay so as a result uh, you come across uh, such kind of thing or if you want to directly interpret means you have to reverse your uh, sinusoidal wave so it was moving in this direction okay you have changed this direction low, uh, in the downward direction so you can say that phase reversal has taken place so that's why such kind of uh, wherever it stops at a bit transition uh, it starts uh, in the reverse direction accordingly okay so i hope uh, you are able to understand the waveform of uh, binary phase shift king fine so uh, that was at the conceptual level we have talked about binary phase shift king now let us see the mathematical representation so it is very very simple so for mathematical representation what we have uh, uh, done here uh, we have a sinusoidal carrier okay our sinusoidal carrier is uh, represented uh, like this a times cosine of uh, uh, say omega not t fine a is the amplitude okay we can represent amplitude in the form of uh, power also like this okay we know that power is equal to a square by 2 okay so where a is your uh, Uh, peak value so your ps is equal to a square by 2 and from there we get a equal to under root 2 ps so if you substitute a equal to under root 2 ps you get this one under root 2 ps fine and uh, uh, this cos omega not t as it is so generally for general representation it is it should be a cos omega not t plus phi this is a general representation so as i told you here that we will be assuming that when one is transmitted then we have phase value zero so we will take this phi as zero so if we take this as zero then what do we get for one the waveform that we will be transmitting it will be under root 2 ps cosine of omega not t okay another instance will come when my bit 0 is transmitted so when i transmit bit 0 then i have to introduce a phase difference of 180 degree okay that means for the case of uh, uh, bit 0 my phase phi will be 180 degree 180 degree or you can say pi radian so for another bit my bpsk signal will be under root 2 ps and i'll have cos omega not t plus pi so this is 180 degree phase i have introduced and we know that cosine of omega not t plus pi gives us minus under root 2 ps cosine of omega not t okay so that means uh, that during one we uh, transmit this one okay during one we transmit this during zero we transmit minus of under root 2 ps like this so you see here that during one we have this during zero we transmit another waveform okay so uh, that is the mathematical representation of uh, psk signal which is transmitted now you must be wondering that why have we represented our zeros and one in the form of nrz pulses the meaning of nrz means non return to zero means what i am doing i am converting my unipolar signal which was in the form of ones and zeros only into bipolar signal okay means i'll be representing one by one and zero by minus one so i'm making my digital wave form bipolar so if i do that and i consider this bipolar wave form as my modulating signal then my psk signal will be generated by simple multiplication of these two multiplication of the bipolar one and the carrier 
okay so you can see here that when you multiply by 1 your carrier will appear as it is when you multiply with minus 1 then your carrier will be reversed then carrier as it is reverse okay so 180 degree phase shift means your uh, negative value so you can uh, make your uh, waveform digital waveform represented in the form of nrz bipolar uh, sequences and you can simply multiply and obtain the psk signal so this is nothing but representing things in a uh, different way all that is required is the concept of uh, binary phase shift king should be clear to all of us i hope all of you have been able to understand this next so as i just told you that we have a binary data so we pass this binary data through bipolar nrz level encoder or you can say we encode that so we get bipolar nrz signal then i told you that we simply multiply these two and we get bpsk signal okay so we know that multiplication effect is provided by balanced modulator so in the balanced modulator what we do we multiply our binary data and the carrier and this thing you have to remember that this binary data has to be in the form of bipolar signal only then your psk will come into picture so if you do that we get at the output bpsk signal so this is how we generate our bpsk signal so this is the block diagram of bpsk modulator okay so if you see the mathematical expression on the left hand side these are the same expressions that we have just uh, discussed in the previous slide one waveform is having phase zero and another waveform is having a phase uh, difference of 180 degree or pi radian okay so if you want to represent this thing in a generalized fashion what i do uh, this under root 2 ps cos omega not is nothing but my carrier part and bt is the bit part okay and this bt it can be either plus 1 or minus 1 okay it will be plus 1 when i have 1 and uh, it will be minus 1 when i have 0 so this bt is a bipolar nrz bit stream so if you represent it like this with a single expression you can represent your bpsk signal so this is how we generate bpsk signal and we can represent bpsk modulator in the form of your block diagram okay so i hope it is clear to each and every one so after this bpsk signal generation let us move forward so after we have seen the modulator part now we need to look into the uh, demodulation part and uh, here we are going to discuss reception of bpsk signal reception means we are going to discuss the receiver of uh, bpsk signal demodulator is also a part of receiver so uh, this is uh, in a way you can say that the complete uh, uh modulation and demodulation system of your uh, bpsk so here uh, this portion is nothing but it is your bpsk modulator okay you have a channel in between and the remaining portion this one is your bpsk receiver okay so we will be mainly focusing on this part which we call as bpsk receiver let us see that so after my signal has bpsk signal has passed from channel to the input of my receiver then obviously i'll be uh, getting uh, bpsk signal at the output of channel which is of the form this one bt under root 2 ps cosine of uh, omega not this is what i get here okay if you remember coherent detection that we talked about in our uh, fsk where i said that we need to have the component of the carrier at the receiver side in order to demodulate our signal so in bpsk or in psk we will have to recover our carrier component from the received signal 
okay so here in this receiver of bpsk the upper portion which has been shown here it is dedicated to the carrier recovery okay and the lower portion is dedicated to your demodulation fine so this upper portion basically tells us how to recover the carrier from the received signal and once the carrier has been recovered that recovered carrier will be used to demodulate our received signal and then finally what do we get we get the original information signal okay so we need to understand first how do we recover the carrier and then how do we use that recovered carrier to demodulate the signal bpsk signal and this is very very simple it may look complex to you but if we go step by step you will come across that it includes the same concepts that we discussed in our analog modulation techniques where we use balance modulator where we uh, recovered our uh, information signal from the received signal so same concepts are again reproduced here with a different flavor let us see that and uh, see again from the day one i am telling you that mathematics will come to our rescue everywhere to understand the concept of your modulation techniques so here also we will try to understand things mathematically and then we will represent that mathematical understanding in the form of various blocks let us now see that so this is our received signal okay now from this received signal we have to extract our carrier now which one is the carrier part the carrier part is cosine of omega not t so we have to extract this cosine of omega not t from this received signal okay and the other portion that is bt under root 2 ps this is nothing but the information signal so we have to remove this and we have to basically extract cosine of omega not t out of this signal so mathematically what do we do whatever signal we have received we pass it through a square law device if you remember in amplitude modulation also we had generated am signal by using square law okay by passing our signal through non linear resistance so same kind of thing here as well so if we pass it through square law device then what will happen this bt this binary stream is a bipolar stream bipolar bit stream okay if you square it then uh, your negative impact it will go away your bt if you square it it will be all one so that's why this bt has vanished under root 2 ps is nothing but it is a constant part so it's in no way going to affect our extraction of the carrier so after passing our signal through square law device we get cosine square omega not t plus theta okay then uh, you may be wondering that from where this theta has come this theta has come see actually we transmitted the signal bt under root 2 ps cosine of omega not t it was at the output of my modulator or output of my transmitter but my signal has also traveled all the way from transmitter to receiver because of channel also some delay or some phase change has been introduced into my transmitted signal so that delay or that phase change is shown in the form of theta okay so that's why uh, we have shown here after uh, the square law device it as cosine square omega not t plus theta okay so once we do that now we know that cos square omega not t plus theta is nothing but 1 plus uh, twice of cosine uh, sorry 1 plus cosine of twice of omega not t plus theta if you uh, use a trigonometric expression okay so let me uh, show you what, what do we get see this is what we get uh, your received signal it is in the form of this bt under root 2 ps cosine of omega not t plus theta okay then we pass it through a square law device that is cosine square omega not t plus theta we get 1 by 2 plus 1 by 2 cosine of twice of omega not t plus theta so here you can see that after square law we have two components the first one is the dc component and this one is our 
high frequency component the carrier frequency has become twice okay dc and some high frequency so if you pass this through a band pass filter whose center frequency is twice of omega node then what will happen that this component it will be removed and we will have this component at the output of my band pass filter so at the output of my band pass filter having center frequency twice of omega note i get this and you can see that i have got twice the carrier frequency signal then i pass my signal through frequency divider which divides the frequency by 2 so if we divide it by 2 we finally get cosine of omega note t plus theta so what we have done from this sig uh, signal we have recovered our carrier we have not generated carrier independently but we recovered the carrier or we extracted the carrier from the received signal fine so if you see mathematically this is what we have uh, uh, done this was our received signal and we have extracted the carrier here fine now let us see further so after you have recovered carrier here then this is our demodulator part in the demodulator part what we will do whatever signal we have received this received signal will be multiplied with the recovered carrier okay see this is the received signal it is multiplied with the recovered carrier fine means coherent detection is taking place so the recovered carrier is nothing but cosine of omega not t plus theta my received signal is nothing but under root 2 b, uh, ps bt cosine of omega not 2 plus theta so means this one and this they are multiplied here if you multiply then again cosine of square will be generated okay see you try to understand one thing though we are getting cosine of square here cosine of square here but in the upper portion our objective was to recover the carrier from the received signal itself we don't want to generate carrier locally we want to extract the carrier from the received signal itself so that there is no phase difference there is no phase change and whatever phase change has been introduced by the channel it is preserved see here my recovered carrier is cosine of omega not t plus theta my received signal also has cosine of omega not t plus theta so this theta is common in the recovered carrier and the received signal it is because of this that we want to uh, recover the carrier from the received signal in order to match this phase in order to synchronize our demodulation that's why it is called synchronous demodulator i hope all of you have been able to understand so this is known as carrier recovery and carrier synchronization okay so if we multiply them we get this bt under root 2 ps cosine square omega not t plus theta okay and uh, we all know that uh, this cosine square trigonometrically what does it consist of this is cosine square omega not t plus theta trigonometrically we have this so now this is bt multiplied with under root 2 ps and this is how we represented cosine square omega not t plus theta okay now from this now what we want to extract we want to extract our message bit and our message bit is bt so if you multiply this bt under root 2 ps inside this bracket it means we want to extract only one by two part which is a constant one now we want to reject this so that we can get our demodulated signal back so what we want we want a low pass filter which can pass our low frequency component and which can reject this high frequency component if you remember in the coherent uh, detection i explained that we use a low pass filter okay and that low pass filter in case of your bpsk receiver is called integrator and dump circuit okay i told you that integrator also works like a low pass filter 
so this integrator is nothing but a low pass filter so if you pass this received signal from integrator that is your low pass filter we will be able to remove this cosine of 2 omega not t part will be left with this one fine so up to this point we have been able to recover our original information but we need to understand one another important part here see i told you that we have digital modulation technique here or we are basically trying to detect digital signal and digital signal is in the form of one and zeros okay and we know that in case of your digital signal we transmit bits that is one and zero bit okay and every bit has a fixed duration okay bit starts at a particular interval of time and bit finishes at a particular interval of time so we must be we must synchronize our starting of the bit and our ending of the bit okay so what happens basically this complete circuit this is called integrator and dump circuit i explained this thing earlier also so what we do normally here that let me explain it like this say so this is one bit this is one and we know if you integrate a square wave then you get a ramp signal this is how we get output after integration okay the purpose of the bit synchronizer is to identify the point from where we have to start integrating okay and this bit synchronizer will tell us the final point up to which we have to continue the integration means after this final point we have to stop integrating okay so you can see here that at the end of the bit interval my integration output is maximum i get the maximum output at the end of my bit duration okay and if you remember when i explained you the concept of digital modulation or digital demodulation i told you that we are concerned with the detection whether a pulse is present or pulse is absent and what we do we compare our received voltage level with a threshold level okay so what we will do we will integrate from the starting of the bit till the end of the bit interval okay and at the end of the bit interval we are expected to get the maximum possible signal level okay the threshold level we will keep the mid level okay at the end of the bit interval we will compare that whatever level we have integrated up to whether it is more than threshold level or not if it is high higher than threshold level or if it is more than threshold level we will assume that we have received one bit if it is lower than that we will assume that it is zero bit okay so that's what uh, will be done here at the end of the bit interval what we will do we will decide whether my bit is 1 or 0 okay so at the end of the bit interval what will happen we will have to do one thing see we are integrating for a bit interval i am again drawing the bit we are integrating okay once we have integrated up to the bit interval then we will close this switch once we close this switch my output is obtained either as 0 or 1 whatever bit i have detected this switch will be closed at the end of the bit interval okay and as soon as i have got the output then momentarily i'll close this sc switch the moment i close this switch after i have detected the output then what will happen my integrator circuit it will be shortened it will be short circuited when this switch is closed okay so when this switch is closed the output of the integrated is short circuited means i am dumping i am making my integrator output zero immediately so that i can again integrate for my next bit because bits are coming in sequence 
bits are coming in sequence say this is bit number 1 this is bit number 2 then say zero bit is there then bit number 3 so before my next bit arrives i'll have to dump my integrator output and then i'll again integrate then dump then integrate and then dump it, it, things will continue like that that's why we call this circuit as integrator and dump okay so at the end of every bit interval we will detect my output bit we will dump my integrator output and once i have uh, ensured myself that my output level is more than threshold level then i know that my bit is one so it doesn't matter uh, what is the uh, what level of output signal i have received i have simply uh, need to make a decision if it is greater than th threshold i'll generate a fresh one and say that my one bit has been received okay so uh, this is the beauty of uh, digital uh, demodulation technique or the reception of uh, uh, digital signal okay so if mathematically we uh, see you see here whatever i explained i have shown here that my output voltage at the end of bit interval it is represented in the form of v not ktb so this is for kth bit tb is the uh, bit duration okay so at the end of uh, kth interval fine so i am uh, considering the time interval from k minus 1th bit to k k bit okay so this is my output bit so what has been done t has been replaced with ktb okay so mathematically you can see here that uh, this uh, this one this signal is being integrated from over a one bit duration from k minus 1 to the beginning of k okay so i am integrating it over one bit duration so it has two parts one by two and this one so this is one part this is your second part and since i am integrating you know that when you integrate it, integrate over one bit interval and you have even number of carrier cycle present there then cosine of 2 omega not t integration will give you zero so if you solve this integration what you will have half is a constant it will come out dt will be t and it is integrated over one bit duration that will give you tb okay so this is what we are left with bk tb is my original bit fine under root 2 ps will become under root ps by 2 because of this 1 by 2 outside and this after integration and putting the limits we get tb so my output bit at the end of bit interval is bsk tb under root ps by 2 into tb these are constant and this gives me the bit value so we have uh, discussed in detail the reception of bpsk signal mathematically as well as in the form of block diagram and this is the best possible method to understand uh, any you know uh, modulation or demodulation technique or uh, understand the concept of any communication system so i hope uh, all of you have uh, clearly been able to understand the entire concept of bpsk signal transmission and reception okay so students after we have looked into the details of uh, bpsk signal reception we need to see the spectrum of bpsk signal we have also talked about the spectrum in our analog communication system we looked into the spectrum of am signal we looked into the spectrum of fm signal i told you we must be aware of the spectrum that a particular modulated signal occupies because bandwidth is the most important resource for any communication system so we need to accommodate as much bandwidth or as much number of signals possible in the available bandwidth so uh, the spectrum of bpsk signal is a bit involved in fact i'll not say involved it looks a bit involved okay but here again uh, it will establish the importance of mathematics in order to understand uh, any communication system so whatever concepts related to fourier transform 
or four year series all of you have studied in your mathematics as well as in the signal and system subject those concepts will be utilized here and we will be able to observe the spectrum of uh, our bpsk signal fine so let us see that so students spectrum means we'll be representing the spectrum of bpsk signal in the form of power spectral density okay this is a parameter mathematical parameter that uh, with the help of which we represent our spectrum or you can say spectrum will be represented through power spectral density okay your power spectral density gives us or the unit of uh, power spectral density is watt per hertz okay it means uh, it gives us power of various frequency components present in the given signal okay and uh, as i told you in bpsk what do we use we use nrz pulses and bipolar and nrz pulses so obviously we will be deriving the spectrum of bpsk signal corresponding to the bipolar nrz pulses okay so in order to find power spectral density or before we look into the complete spectrum of bpsk signal we need to understand few very small things okay your gf is nothing but your power spectral density as i told you power spectral density is proportional to your power signal power okay so or it is watt per hertz so your power spectral density is given by this one okay this expression gives us power spectral density for your nrz by phase signal for that moment you can memorize this expression but you can understand but just by looking at this this is modulus of uh, uh, pf square okay and we have this is the mean value this is mean square value so mean square value we already know that it is equivalent to the power okay and since power spectral density is a frequency domain parameter so your power has to be a function of frequency okay so we know that your power is proportional to your voltage square or amplitude square like that mean square value fine and since here it means this pf is the frequency domain equivalent of your time domain voltage it means this pf is nothing but the fourier transform it is the fourier transform of your signal and then you take its mean square value which gives us the power spectral density okay so uh, that you should uh, appreciate here that your power spectral density is obtained from the or is proportional to the mean square value of your fourier transform of your signal and which kind of signal we are using we are using bipolar nrz signal okay and whose bit duration is tb means this ts is equal to tb here okay and uh, obviously our signal is represented in the form of binary pulse like this okay so its uh, amplitude is plus vb in the positive side since it is bipolar so for negative side it will be minus vb okay and this bit duration is nothing but tb this is what has been represented here so this is time domain signal so your pt is plus minus vb plus minus vb for duration uh, from minus tb by 2 to tb tb by 2 okay so if you assume this as the center so duration is minus tb by 2 to tb by 2 and it is zero elsewhere so what we are doing we are considering a rectangular pulse in fourier transform or in the signal and system subject you must have obtained the fourier transform of a rectangular pulse of the duration tb having amplitude vb okay and uh, if i tell you the fourier transform of rectangular pulse is nothing but it is given as at sync ft so it is represented in the form of sync pulse i i am sure you must have been able to recall this at sync ft where a was the amplitude of this so instead of a we have here what 
we have vb okay t is nothing but tb and sinc ft sinc is nothing but it is a short representation of sin pi f upon pi f okay so this is nothing but it is your sinc function so this is my representation of bit in time so if you represent this bit in frequency by using this fourier transform it looks like this it looks like this something like this i'm showing you here the uh, rough sketch it will be like this okay so in frequency domain your bit looks like this in time domain your bit looks like this so this was my time domain representation if i take the fourier transform this is nothing but your fourier transform e raised to the minus j 2 pi ft okay vb was constant which has come out i am integrating it from minus tv by 2 to t by 2 and this is what i get okay so the fourier transform of my rectangular pulse or rectangular bit is this one okay and if you substitute the value of pf in this expression this is what i get okay so uh, what do i get if you square this you get vb square this is uh, your tb and square of this so this is how uh, i am able to obtain the power spectral density uh, see i'll have tb square so i have here divided by tb so that tb will be cancelled it is will be v square tb so this is the expression for power spectral density of my rectangular pulse and power spectral density is a frequency domain parameter okay so i hope uh, uh, all of you have uh, understood uh, this expression that how this expression of power spectral density has been derived fine so after we have obtained the expression for power spectral density of uh, nrz bipolar pulse then we need to now obtain the power spectral density of my bpsk signal or bpsk waveform so uh just let me tell you what we have done in bpsk in bpsk this was nothing but my nrz pulse so this nrz pulse has been multiplied with my carrier wave okay and then i get this bpsk fine means the power spectral density of my nrz bipolar pulse the power spectral density of that that is this one has to be multiplied with my carrier wave okay multiplying with the carrier mathematically means we are doing frequency multiplication okay or we are doing basically frequency shifting okay so uh, multiplying with the carrier mathematically means we are multiplying with e raised to power some j omega t if you remember the property of fourier transform okay so if you multiply by this then what happens there is a frequency shifting property in the fourier transform and in uh, the re when we represent our sinusoidal carrier in the form of exponent we know that Uh, there are two exponential component e raised to power j omega t minus e raised to power minus j omega t okay so there are two exponents so frequency shifting uh, two frequency shiftings will be there due to these exponents fine so one in the plus side and another in the minus side so we will have plus minus e raised to power plus minus j omega not t something of this kind so by applying the property of fourier transform this expression for power spectral density it becomes like this as i told you uh what do we have see here it was sin of pi f tb upon pi f tb sin of pi f minus f not here also f minus f not okay and uh, then we have another that is minus so for corresponding to minus we have sin of pi f plus f not t here also pi f plus f not t okay this is i told you with regard to sin 
whereas see the original expression that we have considered here here uh, we consider not sine we considered cosine that your energy at waveform is multiplied by under root 2 cosine of omega naught t means we are multiplying by cosine so for cosine we will have e raised power j omega naught t plus e raised power minus j omega naught t divided by 2 so this plus sign is this one okay so if you do frequency shifting and you add those terms this is what do we get as the power spectral density of my bpsk signal so this is students i want to explain to you that just by following very simple concept very simple properties of the fourier transform we have been able to derive the power spectral density of the bpsk signal and this expression seem to be so complex but if you carefully look here it was nothing but two sync pulses shifted in frequency okay one is f minus f naught and another is f plus f naught so this is nothing but the frequency domain representation of your bpsk signal which will give us an idea that how we actually represent our bpsk signal in frequency domain if you remember i told you one of the disadvantages of bpsk signal is high bandwidth so this is what we will be able to observe here that when we represent our uh, nrz bipolar pulses in frequency domain we will come to know that it is in the form of sync pulse and your sync pulse extends from minus infinity to infinity means infinite frequency components will be present to represent your nrz bipolar pulses so if there are infinite frequency component means ideally infinite bandwidth will be required to represent your digital signal okay so that thing is possible that realization is possible only after looking into the frequency domain and there frequency uh, domain approaches like fourier transform fourier series will help us in understanding the spectrum okay so with this i hope all of you are uh, clear about the spectrum of bpsk signal let us see further this is what i wanted to show you okay uh, this a wave form this is your uh, power spectral density of uh, nrz bipolar pulse so you can see here it is extending from minus infinity to plus infinity it has not stopped here it will it will continue like this in positive direction sorry it will continue like this fine and uh, once you have multiplied this thing with the carrier in order to get bpsk signal there will be frequency shifting okay so for frequency shifting this has been shifted to two frequencies okay one is corresponding to minus f naught and another is corresponding to plus f naught okay so uh, this is uh, your power spectral density of nrz uh, bit bt and this is power spectral density of the bpsk it also extends like this fine so this is how we represent the spectrum of bpsk signal in frequency domain and uh, it is the fourier transform that has helped us in arriving at this conclusion so now the question arises that if your bpsk signal require infinite bandwidth how will we be able to transmit this bpsk signal efficiently okay the answer to this is that though theoretically infinite bandwidth is required but you can see here that your significant amplitude of the signal is restricted to only a particular uh, band of frequencies okay so these portions of my signal they are having very insignificant uh, frequency components so we can pass my bpsk signal through a band pass filter okay so uh, uh, or 
what i can do my uh, this bipolar nrz signal it can be passed through uh, a filter so that uh, these side lobes we call these as side lobes so these side lobes can be filtered out and uh, i transmit it transmit only a select uh, portion of the signal and then uh, 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 in the channel we can survive with the finite bandwidth okay so these side lobes they will not affect the actual quality of the signal and we will also be able to save the bandwidth fine so this is all about the spectrum of your bpsk signal okay see you can see here that uh, this is uh, minus 14 db uh, uh, down as compared to the peak level so the, this is the amount of difference between these two uh lobes this is your side lobe and this is your main lobe so we transmit only the main lobe and uh, we do away with these side lobes okay same kind of thing we had discussed in uh, fm also fine next so now the last topic of uh, bpsk signal is geometric representation of uh, bpsk signal and this concept is also very very important uh, here uh, in fact uh, whatever i talked about spectrum that thing will be uh, you know re required for other uh, digital modulation techniques also whatever i talked about extraction of the carrier and uh, synchronization of the carrier and the concept of integrator and dump that kind of concept will also be used in other modulation techniques so whatever concept we have discussed in bpsk signal those concepts will be utilized in the coming uh, modulation techniques also so that's why uh, this uh, today's class is very very important for general understanding with regard to any digital communication system okay so see in time domain or mathematically i had uh, told you that in bpsk what we have we have uh, uh, two uh, kind of signals at the output uh one is uh, corresponding to you can say one and another is corresponding to zero means what we are doing we are having two output waveforms mathematically or in other words i'll say that uh, in this we are transmitting two symbols if you remember i told you the concept of symbol and bit so in case of binary each symbol will be represented by one bit so i can say that one is uh, transmitted through this and zero is transmitted through this so in binary psk i am sending my one and zero like this okay so when i represent these expressions in the form of you can say phasor or in the form of uh, uh, this vector diagram uh, i call it as geometric representation so your digital modulation techniques they are also very frequently represented through your geometric representation we also give it a name constellation diagram constellation diagram so this constellation diagram is very very important in your digital modulation techniques so hope you have uh, read about this word constellation uh, with respect to stars in the sky we have uh, you know, so many constellation so this concept of constellation diagram has come from uh, those stars only okay you must have heard the word great bear okay uh, then orion so uh, those constellation diagrams uh, you have seen so if you look at a star your star is a point in the sky so this geometrical representation or constellation diagram here in digital modulation scheme here the symbol or the bit that we transmit is represented in the form of a point the way we have a star in a constellation okay so on a phasor diagram or on a phasor plane we represent our uh, signal or symbol that we transmit as a point okay in binary how many points will be there two points will be there 
in quaternary we'll have or in quadrature we have four points okay uh, in uh, eight psk we will have eight constellation points okay so the number of points that will be available in our constellation diagram that will be decided by the number of distinct symbols that we uh, use for transmission of our or for modulation of our digital data so you can see here that uh, in binary we have uh, two constellation points in uh, quadrature we have four constellation points okay in eight say psk will have we have eight constellation points and these constellation points are equidistant and in fact these constellation points are placed on a circle and we all know that in circle uh, the maximum angle that is there is 360 degree or 2 pi radian okay so uh, that's why like uh, the phase difference between these constellation points uh, will give us the phase difference between different modulation symbols so you can see here uh, the phase difference between these two constellation points or these two symbols of bpsk that is 180 degree in case of quadrature psk the phase difference will be how much this will be 90 degree phase difference this is also 90 degree 90 degree okay 360 divided by 4 gives us 90 degree okay then uh, uh, in case of uh, your uh, uh, 8 psk uh, your phase difference between adjacent uh, constellation points will be 360 by uh, 8 will which gives us pi by 4 radian or 45 degree you can see here so we represent our digital symbols that we transmit distinct digital symbols uh, in the form of uh, constellation points on a phasor plane like this okay and these constellation points help us give uh, in giving a fair idea uh, about the performance of any uh, digital communication uh, technique okay so uh, that is your geometric representation i have basically tried to explain you this thing conceptually only though uh, there is a mathematical representation of these constellation points uh, i have not considered it deliberately so that you may not get confused okay and since your x axis and y axis they have a, a phase difference of 90 degree uh, this uh, x axis it is called in phase uh, axis and uh, this uh, y axis is called as quadrature axis so we also call it as i and q and if you remember we represent our complex number uh, also here so you can call it as imaginary axis and uh, your real axis so if you want to represent a complex number that complex number is also represented with a point and uh, you represent its coordinate by your real part and complex part so this is nothing but also a phasor representation or a complex point representation in the phasor plane so this is how we represent our uh, uh, bpsk signal wave forms with the help of constellation points and this is for qpsk that we will discuss in the coming classes okay uh, in fact the distance between these constellation points that also tell us that how robust Uh, a mo digital modulation technique is against noise okay so the larger the distance between constellation point the more is the immunity against noise okay or the more the lesser is the probability of the error so such kind of information we get from our geometric representation of any uh, digital modulation symbol okay so that's all about uh, today's class uh, uh, dear students i hope all of you have understood the concept of uh, your uh, bpsk modulation technique okay thank you